Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Eric, and let me just start off by saying we have got some amazing projects lined up for you. We've got some great sausages, some incredible dry cured meat products that are very easy to make. But in today's episode, we're gonna be continuing our series on how to grow dragon fruit. The idea for this series is to start off with zero dragon fruit and end up with a full-blown dragon fruit orchard in our backyard, lots of different varieties. Hopefully we'll get fruit from all of them. And today's the day we receive our dragon fruit cutting. So we got dragon fruit from three different places. Let's go take a peek and talk about the experiences with each one. All right, so to make a dragon fruit orchard, we need dragon fruit. In the first place we got our cuttings was a local nursery run by a man and his wife about four or so hours from where we live. He's an avid collector that turned his passion into a business and now sells dragon fruit commercially. So very excited to get uh, some of these nice cuttings. And as I'm opening up the box, first impressions, these cuttings look great. I mean, clearly they come from mature plants, nice and healthy. Uh, as far as size goes, a typical dragon fruit cutting is gonna be between eight to 12, maybe 15 inches. So as you can see right here, we've got some really nice large cuttings. 24 inch cuttings. Uh, that particular variety was David Bowie. Uh, this one is Purple Haze. And what I chose to do was buy these in sets of four for our proposed orchard. Now that's totally optional. And when we get to uh, the stage where we're planting and then trimming and training our dragon fruit, I'll go into more detail as to why we did that. But this particular variety is American Beauty. Very excited to give that one a taste. A lot of different varieties in the dragon fruit kingdom. This variety is known as condor. Very interesting shape, not very spiny. Uh, let's check out the cuts that were used uh, for these cuttings. Notice we've got a couple different styles. That's called a horizontal cut right there. And this is called a stem cut. Notice how the stem cut's a little green. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna let that callus over for about a week before we plant it. And that's just gonna lessen the chance of our dragon fruit uh, rotting during the rooting stage. So we're just gonna place that into a nice shady area for you know, five days or so, give or take. Now, I did notice that the majority of these cuttings don't have any markings indicating which direction they should be planted, uh, which is pretty important when you begin rooting it. And so in another video, we'll talk about how to identify uh, which way is up and which way is down. This variety is known as yellow tie. Very excited to have this one in our orchard. And notice how thin the cutting is. Uh, they almost look flat. Now that's not indicative of this variety. That just means that it has lost a lot of moisture and desperately wants to be planted. So as soon as this gets rooted and it begins to grow, it's actually gonna plump up really nicely. And you'll see an update video on that uh, later on. So there we go. That's the first place that we got dragon fruit cuttings. The next place is a nursery at California Polytechnical Institute Pomona, also known as Cal Poly Pomona. I'll put a link in the description box below. And a great big thanks goes out to that special someone who actually helped me get these because unless you live in California, Cal Poly Pomona does not ship outside of the state. So Thank you. You know who you are. All right. What's different about Cal Poly is that these plants are not cuttings. They're actually rooted dragon fruit. So let's go to another table and take a closer look. Now, I've received one box already that I forgot to film. And as you can see right here, each rooted dragon fruit has a popsicle stick with the name that identifies the variety. Well, in that first shipment, about eight of those popsicle sticks had fallen out. And although I was able to identify two of those eight, it still left me with six that were kind of like mystery dragon fruit. So uh, I didn't want to include those into the orchard. This is what had happened. Notice the popsicle stick, it's no longer there. What I did was contact Cal Poly and ask them specifically to write the name of the variety on the pot. And uh, that's exactly what they did. So thank you, Cal Poly for accommodating my request. And if you buy from Cal Poly, I would suggest you request the same thing. That way you're not you're left with, you know, mystery dragon fruit. So notice these are nice and small. They are rooted, uh, very healthy little plants. Uh, the rooting part does normally take about a month to six weeks. And so you do get that head start with these varieties from Cal Poly. And although they do seem small, believe it or not, they actually grow quite quick. Now, I do handle rooted dragon fruit differently than cuttings, uh, primarily because these have been rooted and grown in an area that's not mine. And so we will do a video on how to climatize your rooted dragon fruit. All right, we've saved the best for last. This is from spicyexotics.com. And this package has traveled a very long distance to get to me. So I'm actually surprised it looks this good. 
Let's go ahead and get into it and see what these dragon fruit cuttings look like over at Ty Miller's place, spicyexotics.com. All right, we got a little pamphlet here. We'll put that to the side. Spicy Exotics has different size options for cuttings. I chose the large option for these cuttings. And it looks like right here he tossed in a bag of dragon fruit chips. All right. That's some Spicy Exotics dragon fruit chips. You know what? I think we're going to make a separate video just for that. That pretty awesome. I don't think I've ever had dragon fruit chips. That'll be fun. All right. So these are absolutely gorgeous cuttings. Let's just measure one out right quick just to see what that looks like. It looks like it's just a hair over 35 inches. That is enormous uh, in the world of dragon fruit cutting. So I got several different varieties from Spicy Exotics. Some self-fertile, some self-sterile. This variety is Country Roads. It's a self-sterile variety. And the way Ty operates over at Spicy Exotics is he'll write the name of the plant uh, on the bottom of the cutting. So this is the area that you plant it in the ground. So wherever he puts the initials, that's where it's going to go in the ground. And it looks like all the cuttings are stem cuts that have calloused over really well. So as far as these cuttings go, we could just begin the process of rooting them. Included was paperwork on how to grow dragon fruit, just very general information to get you started. And the second page is a list of the dragon fruit varieties that Spicy Exotics offers. And next to the varieties that I ordered, it just has the size that denotes, you know, what was ordered. This is an absolutely incredible list of dragon fruit separated by flesh color, some incredibly rare, hard to find dragon fruits. So if you need dragon fruit cuttings and you want to grow this amazing fruit alongside with me, check out spicyexotics.com. I'll put a link in the description box below. All right, folks, there you have it. Three different companies, three different experiences uh, when it comes to buying dragon fruit. And personally, I really enjoyed the Spicy Exotics experience. Uh, the other places were great too, but I love the huge selection. I love the extra large option. And so I'm already working up a wish list for round number two. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. If you like this video, great big thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and you want to know more about dragon fruit, click that subscribe button and that notification bell, because in the next video, I'm going to share with you my tips on how to have 100% rooting success. So you're not going to want to miss it. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in the next one.